Alright oh guys, welcome to Formula 1 News. Baku once again delivers an absolutely banger Grand Prix. McLaren versus Ferrari with transported back in time in Formula 1 to maybe a better time. What a Grand Prix we had today. Oscar Piastri takes the victory in remarkable fashion, but an incredible day for McLaren. Lando Norris with a mega recovery drive, still putting serious points on his championship rival Max Verstappen, who had a torrid day. So much reaction, especially when Max could be picking up more of a time penalty for an issue under the VSC towards the end of the Grand Prix. Let's break down all the action today because this has mega implications for both championships. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. This was just a phenomenal screenshot really of this Piastri versus Leclerc battle that we'll get into over the coming minutes. But at the start of the day, Hamilton was going to have to take a pit lane start. This is a couple of reasons for this. It seemed like they weren't happy with Hamilton's suspension, and even though he was starting P7, which is solid enough, they decided to sacrifice that, and he needed another engine. They had a failure back in Australia. They had to do something at some point. They decided now was the time to force Hamilton into a pit lane start, changed every component on the car, and they did a couple of things under Park Ferme as well. So he had to start from the pit lane. Same with Esteban Ocon. That didn't help Norris because Ocon qualified like 19th or something. So, um, but it did move Norris up to 15th place before the race actually began. So um, there was some talk from this about exactly why Mercedes did this. Hamilton was asked like, are they confident you can make progress? And he was like, no, I'm not confident. Neither is the team because clearly Mercedes are still struggling with some understanding of their car. It's mainly the performance of the tires not even just in quality, but also the race, and understanding exactly how to get them in the right window consistently. Mercedes have struggled with this a lot, and even with reverting the upgrade package, it's still a problem, right? So it's just pretty rare that Mercedes can actually put all the pieces together, whereas McLaren, it seems, every weekend are capable of putting together a car that's able to win the Grand Prix, regardless of what track run. I mean, they've done it at the Dutch Grand Prix, done it at Monza, now done it at Baku. So many different tracks, and they've still been able to deliver cars that are at least capable of winning the race. They don't always execute, but today, McLaren and their drivers executed extremely well. Quick note as well, Formula 2 was quite dramatic today. Bortoletto now takes the lead in the championship over there which is certainly going to help his aspirations to get a Formula 1 seat next season but there was a mega crash in the background mainly because Kushmini's car got ran into at a ridiculous rate of knots so many cars caught up in this incident mainly because in F2 they don't have anti-stall so if you stall on the grid you're just stuck there a sitting duck to get slammed into from behind thankfully everyone was okay but um, a mega incident and the big talking point really was the fact that a lot of fluid leaked out of the cars and they leaked pretty much at Leclerc's grid position so not ideal like for Charles Leclerc as they were about to get off the line but that they did and Leclerc holds the lead into turn one the big incident really for turn one was especially because Hamilton was starting in the pit lane so not amongst the absolute mess of you know Russell Verstappen Alonso etc etc but Russell actually loses out at this point it looks pretty fine for Russell in the end because Verstappen didn't get a particularly good launch Checo locks up a bit Russell has a fine run but um he actually ends up just losing the line to Verstappen and then Russell I think gets a bit scared really going into the second turn because that's where him and Max had that coming together last year but it was roles reversed right it was Russell on the inside and Verstappen on the outside this time was the other way around and Russell just kind of bailed out he didn't want any part of that because I think he thought that because of what happened last year Max might just shove him into the wall so um, Russell basically bailed out of it he did get him back at the end of the Grand Prix which was surprising to me and we'll talk about that in a second this was though Stroll on Sonoda they had it coming together Stroll was very optimistic, shall we say, sending it down the inside. Poor Yuki's car was damaged and he was out of the Grand Prix shortly afterwards. This is actually when he lost a lot of time and therefore so did Norris. Norris made good progress though off the start. I mean, he made the moves he needed to, even though he was on the hard tyres. Norris executed very well today. And I talked about this yesterday, right? That Norris, if he was able to recover substantially today, would be a championship level drive. And I think he delivered that today. Given that there was no safety car to help him up the field. And yes, the crash at the end that we'll definitely dive into helped massively. Norris was able to deliver, but because Yuki was slow, he lost several seconds. And by the time he eventually caught up to these guys, you can actually see him over here overtaking Yuki with a massive hole in his side pod. So um, eventually he got the job done where he needed to. 
two and started to close up up front. But Leclerc at the start of the Grand Prix on the medium tyres and a tyre that Ferrari had put a lot of work into their setup on, they hadn't seemingly set up quite as well for the hard tyre. And that definitely hurt them when it came to the second and the longest into the race because at this point Leclerc was indomitable as usual. McLaren though was saying that Piastri had probably pushed too hard too soon on the mediums, cooked them a bit and then was losing time. It looked at this point Leclerc was going to run away with the Grand Prix victory. But all of a sudden, when Piastri got onto the harder tyres, and so did Leclerc, then it was a different story. Hamilton had a bit of a race to forget today. A torrid time out there at the Mercedes. We'll talk more about it in a second on how he was struggling with the handling of the car. But um, he did become, I think Alonso's done this before. I don't know if any other driver's done this before. Probably not. 100,000 kilometres raced for Hamilton. But um, this was Norris making a move on Ollie Behrman in the end. Behrman had a phenomenal race again today and yes in the early stint he was second best to Nico Hülkenberg his teammates but at the end of the Grand Prix ends up ahead of him which is remarkable especially because we talked about going into the weekend would it be possible for Behrman to score points again this time at a Haas? The answer was yes but Verstappen was absolutely fuming. It did not seem like this guy was having a good time. We know that he made and Red Bull made some setup changes to the car earlier in the weekends and we saw that pay off today the other way around, right? Perez was in the fight for the podium, if not the victory. Verstappen was really struggling with the car, with getting the car to turn at all. And it was a remarkable role reversal in some ways that Perez was, you know, having a fine, perfectly fine time. The car for Red Bull was better this weekend, for sure, but Max was just struggling with it massively and, um, you know, reminiscent maybe in some ways of even last year around here where Perez was just the better Red Bull driver. That maybe isn't a massive surprise around Baku, but the extent of Verstappen's struggles today were very significant when it comes down to the fact that Lando, had he not got knocked out of qualifying early yesterday in those dramatic circumstances, Lando could have qualified ahead of Piastri, who knows, for today's race. Lando could have won today's race and put a massive points delta on Max Verstappen. In the end, he didn't, but it was still a good number of points that have been taken out of Verstappen's championship lead on a weekend where it looked like the opposite was going to happen. So that's one of the key talking points of today. But here we are, lap 15 of the race. Leclerc, six Six seconds ahead of Piastri at this point. It's looking like, wow, this guy is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. But we've got to talk about Williams as well. Albon, basically, Colopinto stopped early and went for the early stop and then undercut everyone. Albon went for the massive overcut, stay out super late, hope to hold people up later in the Grand Prix. And just did a phenomenal job, Albon. Like, we talk about the Williams before, the fact that, let's say, last year or the year before, it was a car that was rapid in a straight line and would be good at circuits like Monza, but terrible everywhere else. This year, it's more of an all-rounder, but actually a pretty good all-rounder. Like, the Williams is a legitimately decent car right now. And Haas are in a good fight with Williams in the constructors. Haas scored a point today, but um, Albon and Colopinto, they scored more. And um, just what a race, you know, what a race. Given that there was no safety cars until right at the death. Super entertaining fight for the Grand Prix victory today and this is what we saw Piastri comes into the pits obviously a big gap at this point to Perez because Perez has already stopped it looked like maybe he was going to get undercut but no Norris actually I'm not sure Norris like slowed down to help out his teammates but we thought coming into the day or coming into the weekend it might be Piastri holding up somebody else for Norris or something like that but no Norris in this situation was nicely holding up Perez through the middle sector I don't know if Norris was actually slowing down. He was just simply slower because he was on older tyres at this point. So Perez got held up a little bit. And by the time he got out of the pit lane, Piastri stayed ahead, which was critical to his race and the Grand Prix victory today. So Piastri, all of a sudden, though, was back on Leclerc. They both went for the pit stops. And on those harder compound tyres, all of a sudden, the McLaren seemed like the faster car. And then Oscar put on a mega move. He actually said in the cooldown run that when he went for this move, he wasn't sure he was making the corner. When he was in this position right here, he was 50-50 Piastri on whether he was going to crash into that wall or whether he was just about going to keep it alive, which he did. Leclerc didn't expect the move. Big lunch from Oscar. And Oscar Piastri, a few rounds ago, I would say roughly halfway through this season, I was, I wouldn't say concerned because of what Piastri's done in his rookie career, right? Formula 3, Formula 2, stuff like that. You know, been so dominant and has been expected to be an incredibly top-level driver. I would say maybe 10 races ago, I was a bit concerned about his trajectory. He was getting clearly outperformed by Lando. It didn't seem like he'd made massive progress with his tyre degradation. And I was a bit concerned about whether Piastri 
Ferrari was going to blossom and going to flourish into a driver that's going to be capable of winning a championship. I feel like his mentality has always been very impressive. I've said it before, and I've probably said it again, if you gave Lando Norris Piastri's mentality, you would have a you know maybe the best driver on the grid, or certainly right up there as one of the top drivers capable of winning multiple championships if you put both of their best elements together. Piastri has, though, the mental game. Absolutely. And his performance today, in this moment, and under pressure, was incredibly commendable. And I actually think that over the last few rounds, yes, Norris has generally outperformed Piastri in terms of pure pace and stuff like that, like Hungary was one example. But other factors, you know, starts, performing under pressure, maybe on some level, Piastri's been very good at. And I think today solidified him in my mind as potentially a future world champion. And I genuinely think the drives today from both Leclerc and Piastri were absolutely sensational. Like these guys fought for like 47 laps on a set of hard tires and it was clean, clean racing, great racing. You know, they were just a step above the rest of the field at the time. And then you put Perez and Sites next to each other for one quarter and they crash into each other, right? So I think it goes to show the levels that both of these guys showed today. But yeah, Piastri today has gone up pretty big time in my estimation, actually, because we knew he was good. But today it was genuinely a drive of top, top quality. And if he can kick on from here, wow, do we have an exciting grid going into the next couple of seasons, especially with the way that Piastri is looking. But this was a three-way battle for the win and a three-way battle that was happening for like 35 laps. Like it was mega, right? And um, it was a bit of a to and fro in the sense that Piastri would need to be careful and Leclerc, of course, every lap he spends behind Piastri is just cooking his tyres more and more. Like, every lap you spend in the dirty air, your tyres are going to struggle at some point. And um, Leclerc, I think, did so well to even be in the mix and challenge Piastri again and again and again and try and put him under pressure. And um, obviously, Charles was on the radio talking about how they were pushing at the moment. This is lap 23, and this was the case for another, you know, 30 laps, basically, until the end of the Grand Prix. But um, Norris, at this point, was ahead of Max, but because Norris hadn't pit yet... So so it looks like oh, Norris is going to lose you know, 20 seconds in the box. He's going to go way down the order. Verstappen's going to get again. But Verstappen couldn't get past Norris even on fresher rubber. And that just showed where things were. And even getting past Albon was proving a massive challenge for anyone. There was even talk from Hamilton because he was just in no man's land really. That he was having to drive the car in like pretty much his corner entry and exit. He couldn't drive in anywhere near the normal line you would like to because the car wasn't responding. So um, he basically said, are you seeing how I'm having to drive this thing? Referring to it as this thing. So clearly whatever they did with that car was, um, you know, was not enjoyable for Hamilton today. This was Leclerc nearly getting past Piastri as he did on a couple of occasions. But this was Checo Perez in the mix there or thereabouts looking for an opportunity. I genuinely felt like we might have an Austrian situation where Piastri and Leclerc were to crash and then Perez was going to come through for the dub. We actually got a pretty different result to that in the end. This was Verstappen on the radio. Not a happy man. I have no rear grip. The car is just jumping on the rear, losing contact. He said his brakes weren't working. Like, um, you know, Max is not happy right now with the way that that Red Bull is performing underneath him and his championship lead did not go the way that he would have expected it to today. So um, at this point in the race, Norris still had to box those so it looked like that was not going to end especially well for him. And it was a massive fight still up front. Obviously on the radio, Charles was kind of confused where he was because he felt like Piastri's tyres were starting to struggle, but his own tyres in the dirty air were going to struggle at some point. They did try McLaren, a bit of a sneaky trick here, going on the radio to say, hey, Charles, box opposite McLaren, and then told him to stay out, stay out, stay out, just to make sure he didn't believe it really. But um, yeah, it was a bluff call attempted to get McLaren to box. They didn't fall for the bait. And then, when Ferrari asked him, like, do you want plan C, which is probably the two-stop show, I was like, that's stupid, that's never going to work. Overtaking around here is just too tricky. This was Colapinto, Behrman, Hamilton, all in a fight, and they were right on the borderline at this point of the points, right? While the battle was continuing up front, at this point, Perez had dropped a couple of seconds back, but the fighting between Piastri and Leclerc continued, and Piastri just had to manage, right, because he knew that Leclerc was on him, so he had to decide how he was going to manage the tyres. Just sensational work from all of those 
those guys at the front of the field and it was just great to watch. I mean, we didn't have a safety car until the end of the race, but we certainly had some entertaining batting. Like, it wasn't long ago that Max would be in the lead just stretching the advantage five tenths a lap, five tenths a lap, five tenths a lap. And we had like four cars today in the fight for the Grand Prix victory. Still some interesting combos on the radio for McLaren. No papaya rules mentioned though, however, today. And um, this was the front of the field. You can just about see Charles Leclerc here behind Piastri. And this is Carlos Sainz closing up to the front of the field, given all the battling that was going on earlier up. And then Charles realized it's over, right? They went past the limit. There wasn't really another option. I think Piastri just managed it so well. And obviously Leclerc was kind of saying... If we'd have done things a little bit differently in terms of our execution early on in the race, maybe if they'd done something slightly different on setup or whatever, they could have potentially changed the trajectory of the Grand Prix. But um, and then Leclerc was just falling too far behind. Piastri was pulling away, and at this point it was then Perez and then Sainz right in the battle. And genuinely, it looked like Leclerc maybe P4 on the cards because his tires were completely cooked, while Perez had preserved them somewhat better. We know that he's great here around Baku, but all of a sudden, going up the road into turn three, we then got this big moment. And um, this is so dramatic because Leclerc was having to defend for his life against Perez. Actually, Perez was basically past him, but not quite a full car length ahead. So Leclerc braked super deep into turn one, effectively just ran Perez out of road, and that allowed Sainz through as well. Perez obviously weren't happy about it. They then go side by side down the second straight. Leclerc was kind of like clear, at least for this lap at this point. And I don't know exactly who is to blame for this. I want to say it's more of a racing incident because Sainz was simply following his line. In the slipstream of Leclerc, there was room to Sainz's left for Perez to go into. But, you know, basically Sainz kind of held his line, moving, you know, alongside Leclerc, really, following the slipstream. Perez kind of just followed his line, moving pretty much dead straight. You know, Sainz moved left, maybe Perez moved a bit right, I don't know. They come together and bang, into the wall, big impact. And um, thankfully, both of the guys are okay. It was scary for Russell behind because all of this debris, he couldn't see anything. He didn't know where the car was, didn't know where the debris was, was just flying through it blinds. And um, thankfully, the car wasn't in the middle of the track because that, of course, could have been disastrous. But um, yeah, Perez, Sainz, both fuming. And it's incredible, right, that Perez had such a good Grand Prix today, deserved a podium, really. And, um, you know, it was finally going to finish ahead of Max and then doesn't because of the crash that we had. So the VSC comes out and that is your Grand Prix result. Oscar Piastri takes the win. Leclerc with a great second. Russell again benefits big time to get a podium like similar to Austria right when he inherited the win but Norris took Verstappen at the end of the Grand Prix and secured the fastest lap after the pit stop to gain three points on Max on a day where he was gonna start 17th place. So what a turnaround. About as good of a day that McLaren could possibly have hoped for and massive for them in the constructors. Big loss for Ferrari as well because they were kind of in the championship fight for the constructors. Today that's probably been put to bed really that McLaren are going to be winning that one and um, obviously not helpful for Red Bull with Perez going out as he did. Alonso with a great sixth place which is kind of quiet to be honest. Stroll eventually retired with some issues at the end of the Grand Prix but Hamilton eventually gets a cover of points despite a disaster a race for him. Behrman ends up ahead of Hulkenberg, becoming the first driver to ever score points for two separate teams on his, you know, basically his first two races, two different teams, scores points of both. He's man for the future. We talked about Behrman before, but um, such a great drive for him today. As for Collar Pinto, eighth place for him, four points for him, six for Albon. Like, what a final result that we secured today. And, um, you know, Oscar Piastri, what a drive out of him. That, of course, secures McLaren as the leaders, now quite substantially, of the Constructors' Championship. 20 points their advantage now over Red Bull. And as it stands, a 59-point advantage of Verstappen over Norris. This is coming down quickly, and if you'd have, like I said yesterday, right, if Norris can get to fifth and Verstappen ends fourth, that's like okay for Norris. That's not the end of the world. It actually turned out Norris was fourth, Max was fifth, so even better, and the fastest lap for Lando. There's seven races to go, including three sprints. So imagine Norris wins a sprint and Max is fifth. That's like another four or five points advantage, right? That's a big deal. And potentially to add insult to injury to Max Verstappen, he's under investigation for a VSC infringement. McLaren are under investigation for having personnel in the pit lane. Many drivers are under investigation right now. But um, effectively, 
Max Verstappen, after the chequered flag, was driving around basically congratulating other drivers and overtaking them, right? This is not uncommon practice. But under a VSC, even after the chequered flag, you're not meant to do this. So, um, and you can argue that this would be a bit of a joke from the FIA to do anything, and maybe they won't. But if you get to 10 second penalty, which is possible, I guess, he would be demoted to sixth place. Another two points would go away. So, um, you know, it's a big deal. But massively intrigued to your thoughts on all of this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.